What's up everybody? Blue Gabe. I am in Steenahatchee, Florida, which is up in the northwest corner just south of the Panhandle. And I am here in search of scallops, which look just like that. I had no idea when I planned this trip that it was even scallop season. So I also brought my spear gun because I was here last year and saw a couple big flounder while I was swimming around catching these scallops. I'm about four miles from the mouth of the Steenahatchee River. I came out, headed due north. I don't really know my way around here. Last year I was with Mr. Jody, who's one of the owners of the Steenahatchee River Club, and he brought me. And to be honest, I didn't pay attention where I was going. So this morning I just got up, came out here, looked for some other boats, saw some stuff that looked like what I dove last year, and I'm gonna get in the water. Now the reason I'm here is Trevor Roberts, one of my favorite humans on the planet, called me a few days ago and asked if I wanted to come up and just hang out. Kelly Young, my girlfriend who also has another huge YouTube channel, and I have been traveling all over the place nonstop with no breaks. She needed to go see her grandma. I've had my kids all week fishing, so I said, you know what? They can go to their moms, and I'm taking this pro drive that you see me in right now, loading up some gear, and I'm going on a little mini vacation. I'm gonna get suited up, get my other GoPro, get in the water and see if I can't catch a limit of scallops. You're allowed one gallon. That's a half a gallon, so I can fill it twice. Let's go see if I can do it. Now, if you're wondering how I'm gonna swim by myself, I've got this rope attached to the front of the boat, this Pro Drive super light, so I can just pull it around with me anywhere I need to go. Look at that huge conk. We call it a horse conk. been going at it for probably 15 minutes and almost got my limit there are so many scallops out here so Danko the same people that make my flay knife makes this floating net I just hooked it right up here on the bow of my boat I probably got half gallon already we're definitely having scallops for dinner Guess what, ladies and gentlemen? We are having flounder and scallops for dinner tonight. I'm thinking scallop stuffed flounder. Oh, oh, yes! I was swimming and I saw them. I had to come back to the boat to get the gun. It took me forever to find him again, so got him. He's illegal. We're good to go. All right, folks at home, y'all see that big storm? It's come out of nowhere. There's actually a tropical depression aiming to hit Venice, Louisiana right now, and we're in the Gulf, and it's swinging some bands towards us. But right now, I got to haul Boogie back inside to get out of the way of the storm. This boat only runs about 23 miles an hour, and I've got a long ways to go, so I'll see y'all inside. All right, so I could not make it back in, but I want to show you guys the situation I just put myself in and warn you guys of doing the same thing. So I was just out there about three miles scalloping, not paying attention to the weather. Look what's coming. 
that storm snuck up on me and if this little island wasn't here i would be in real real bad shape but fortunately common sense told me to if i couldn't make it back in to get in shore and at least get in real shallow water there was this little island here so i power pulled down i've got my bow up on the island so when it starts flooding the water will go back and my bilge pump can suck the water out and i won't be in trouble so always pay attention when you're on a boat to storms pay attention to everything but most importantly pay attention to the weather because right now if i didn't have this little island i'd be screwed because it's blowing like 40 right over there look at it coming around the island so i've got my power poles down my bow up and i'm good thank god though i brought my frog togs you should always have a good first aid kit and a good set of foul weather gear on your boat at all times for cases just like this because it could get really cold in front of this storm and during the storm. So I'm safe, I'm dry, got my new Steenahatchee River Club hat on, and we're good to go. On a side note, while this storm is hitting and I'm safe, might as well break out the old salty and try to catch a redfish. Can y'all look at that? Just look at that. Not a ripple out here. And an hour and a half ago, it was blowing 35 and nasty. I got my limit though. Check out these bad boys. They're not the biggest scallops that I've ever seen, but they're gonna eat and taste just as good as any of them I've ever had, I'm sure. That's not a bad one. This floating net from Danko has this bungee on here. I just hooked it just like that and was able to keep them in the water all day. This is only half. I've already filled the bucket up once, so now I got a gallon. That's my legal limit. Only in Steenahatchee, though, will you see airboats out here snorkeling. You don't see that anywhere else other than Steenahatchee. Maybe Crystal River. That's the first time I've ever seen it. Look at this little guy. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> He's let me out. All right, so that's a wrap. Opening day of scallop season 2021 was a perfect success. I've got an eight mile run that away just to get to the mouth of the Steenahatchee River and then probably another couple miles back to the Steenahatchee River Club where we're headed right now. I want to show you guys this place. It is amazing. And Steenahatchee is really known for scallops. Not many people come here for anything other than that and it's mind-blowing to me because they're trout fishing second to none. What is it? What? They've got good fish gigging, bow fishing, really good offshore grouper fishing. It's just an awesome place to come for a vacation. So make sure you check out the Steenahatchee River Club. As y'all can see, I'm back. Say what's up, everybody. What's up, everybody? You guys, I ain't gonna lie, I got homesick. I was tired of being up there by myself. Mm. Kelly was with her grandma and she's gonna go back tonight and then come back diving. Or actually, we're gonna go film for her channel tomorrow. So Jake went with the neighbor to the races and I got Luke all to myself. Now this isn't a flounder video, but this is the flounder that you watched me spear. I speared two, I give one of them away because we really only need one. All I'm going to do is scale it and then flay it. 
the speckled sea trout, we're going to play it. So when I get done with this, I will then show you guys how to clean a scallop. Luke doesn't even know they're in this bucket right here. He's probably going to want to keep all of them in his pocket. Come here, Luke. You want to see them? Look, look in this bucket right here. Look on aisle three in the grocery store. Oh, look at this one. They're orange. Well, I can get back to the fish. Let me just show you. Come over here, Luke. Stand Dad, right here. Dad, I opened one. Whoa, Dad, I opened a clam. Oh, man. That's not exactly how you clean one. <laughs> We're going to teach him. Come over here and stand and watch me. Stand right here. I'm going to take this butter knife. You can't open them like that because you tear the meat in half. It's actually a good lesson. You see in there? You guys see in there? It's going to be hard. The, the part that you're eating is actually connected to the roof and the bottom. So I'm just disconnecting it from the roof. Look, Luke, watch what I'm doing. Now we can tear it open. Just that simple. And you want to get this part, which is really the guts, but what I'm going to use for some fish chum you're going to put it in its own bucket and then you just scoop that chunk of meat out right here put it in that bowl i've just got ice water keeping the bowl cold all right so if you can see in there all i do is take the butter knife and just scrape the top of the shell you just don't want the boot connected just like so see how hard that it's stuck to the other end too so you, you would really have to pull hard to get it off there. But you don't want to tear it, just like so. Now obviously you don't get a ton of meat out of these things. And you only get a gallon each, or a cup of cleaned scallops. But this is all we'll need for a meal, so who cares? It's awesome for us. We're going to keep these shells and put them out in our garden, because I think they look too cool to throw away. So one thing I didn't know about scallops is they actually swim in the water. Oh, yeah. Like I had one come swimming by me like a fish. Really? He actually like came up to the surface. Like I thought they just sat there and like you just picked them up out of the sand like any clam or shell or whatever. That's no, sure enough the scallops like perk up and they'll like swim in the water. It's insane. They actually migrate. They migrate? Yeah. What? Yeah. What does migrate mean? They travel from one place to another. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use this to open up a clam. It's a little bear claw. You might be able to do that. Yeah, so it'll be a perfect idea. Let's see it, Luke. What do you, you got your bear shank out here? Did you tell him how you killed that bear? Dad, you killed it. No, I didn't kill it. A fan sent Luke that bear claw. And he thought in kindergarten he could take it to school with him just like that around his neck. And that didn't go over very well, so. Well, I wanted to show my classmates it. They would. Yeah, but these days, Luke, everybody's sensitive, so you, you just can't be toting in a bear shank. <laughs> Casually just take a big old shank to school. <laughs> Luckily, his principal's ex-military, so he wasn't really mad. He just had to explain to Luke, you can't take a bear shank into kindergarten. Luke, open one with your bear claw. Okay. I'm going to use this one because this one's already opened up enough. All right. You got to get the little meat. You got to do it slow. Yeah, scratch the meat off like I showed you. You got to get that brown gooey stuff off the, the little white piece of meat. <laughs> so, it's got to look like this, Luke. Look, let me show you. Oops. Now that you got it open like that, see how you had it open? The gnats are bad out here right now. Mm -hmm. We should go. Look, you see that? Dad, we should go inside and do this. <laughs> I don't think Kelly would appreciate that. Yes, there's already fish carcasses in the trash. Kelly, look on the top of this thing. Mm -hmm. Dad, look at this clam. What happened to him? He had something growing on him. Oh, chomp, chomp, chomp. Look at that, 500 miles of driving, eight miles of swimming for one bowl. Smaller than what I'd eat for breakfast for cereal but hopefully they're going to taste good. All I have in this pan is coconut oil. I'm trying my little bit of Jamaican slang on these scallops. I'm gonna try something totally different. I was daydreaming while we were cleaning them. 
and I think it's going to work. All I have in there right now is coconut oil and scallops. If you saw my last video, you see that I learned to pinch the salt, not dump the salt. I want to cook these hot and fast for maybe two minutes just till they start to turn white and look finished. Looks like marshmallow cereal. That coconut aroma smells so good. All I have here is some onions and chili peppers. They didn't have any of the peppers that we cooked in Jamaica here at our grocery store, so I just got what I could get. It's just Kelly and I eating. I got Luke some chicken at the store when we went earlier. Now, Raj, that crawfish, if, it, if you're new to the channel, we just got home from Jamaica, and the boy that we were with, he cooked a dish for us, two dishes. Oh man, both of them were amazing. And I'm trying to not mimic the exact dish, but I'm trying to get something taste-wise that's about the same. Something that we can do here very easy. All right, so now I have some curry powder. About a tablespoon. Here I have some local Jamaican seasoning that Raj come up with. I'm gonna stir it in. I was so turned off when I saw them making the crabs. And Kelly even said the same thing. We're not familiar with curry at all, so we're like, oh Lord, what's he making? Let me tell you something, it was good. Some lemongrass, about a tablespoon. Now he's probably gonna laugh when he sees me use this. This is just store-bought minced garlic, about a tablespoon. Stir this up. The yellow color, pretty. Now if you're wondering, oops, I just picked out the bread. If you're wondering why I had the band-aid on there, I don't cut my finger off cleaning the scallop. Some coconut milk. Now I'm gonna slow it down and let it just simmer. So all we have is some fresh pasta we boiled. I'm gonna take a good scoop. Pour it right on top. And we have some coconut that I just toasted while we were on a little break. Look at that. Anytime you toast coconut, it toasts super, super fast. Heck, look at that. Can you smell it though? Now I wanted to do a stuffed flounder. Look at that. I took the time and deboned him. There's no bones in there. It's all meat. But Kelly said she wanted pasta, so we were fly-by-wire. We just completely changed and went to something totally new. So I would never be scared of trying to cook something that you never cooked before. I used the same seasonings, the same type of technique as he used in Jamaica with my own little twist to it. Now we got fresh scallops that I caught yesterday. Coconut. Look at that. I know it's going to be hot. Steaming. Oh yeah. Mm. That toasted coconut did the trick. I promise you. One of my favorite things to eat is scallops. So I'm putting these scallops to the test. Mm. I think curry is like one of my favoriteest new things ever. It was so good. Pasta hits the spot. Coconut's a nice touch. I'd say I did a pretty good job my first attempt. Yep, see you later. What are you digging into? I'm not digging into it, but y'all need to check out this cake that Gabe bought today. Luke told me that they made it just for me. Yep. That's the prettiest bass I've ever seen. We're like the mohawk. Yeah, I'm telling you. So you like the food? Really good, yes. Mm. All right, so for those of y'all who have been following along for a while, we have two more Javaica videos left. If this is the first video, make sure you go back and watch all my videos, but definitely watch the two Jamaica videos. 
because we have one more coming that's of this big massive creature the biggest one i've ever seen in my life and promise you you're gonna like it and then we have a really good cooking episode where i let raj cook pepper shrimp which to me is like insane it was so good to eat right now though we're filming for kelly tomorrow we're going offshore and she's going to hopefully catch some big fish of some kind we don't know what yet i need to do the dishes and eat my own dinner but like my son jake always says it's time to get up out of here and get the heck out of shape